thank you so much, uh, Yao, and um, for inviting me on here. It's a, a real thrill to be presenting my research um, here. Um, and for and to Julie uh, and to and to, and to Susie um, for um, making it all happen. Um, and for those of you who are here um, showing up, um, and to to Ben Liebman who is sitting in the front row here, who who made this project possible, who kind of lured attracted me to the study of um, written court decisions in the first place. Um, I never would have started this project um, otherwise. And. Um, sort of building on the great work that came um, before mine. Um, Leda Hong Fincher is, is, is here and, um, uh, and, and others. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely sort of walking in the, the footsteps of, of giants or whatever metaphor. Uh, it's all, that, that's how I feel. Um, uh, anyway, I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna be as succinct as possible about the, about the book and the, and the argument so I can kind of get to some some new analysis I've done, so I sort of updated um, the analysis. But um, you know, basically, uh, what I report, I guess, the, the key takeaway um, in the book is is, is just how difficult um, it is to get divorced um, in China. It's really, really hard um, to get to get a divorce, um, particularly in courts. Um, I mean, you can get divorced in, in court, but you can also, most people don't get, most people who get divorced don't do so through the court system. They do so through the, the civil affairs um, system. Um, but even more recently, it's become hard to get divorced in the civil affairs system uh, as, as well. Um, the difficulties getting divorced, I mean, the, the majority of divorce cases in China um, are denials. Like the verdict is, denied. You, you may not divorce. So you show up in divorce court, you know, you file for divorce, you appear in front of a judge, um, and you ask for a divorce, you explain why you want a divorce, all the reasons, and, and even if the reasons are fully supported by the law, um, you have very strong grounds um, for divorce, um, the judge is most likely going to say, no, sorry, um, I'm not going to grant your divorce. Um, you will remain married. Um, and this has to do not with the law, um, but with practices, judicial practices and norms that um, are unrelated um, to the to the law. Um, I mean, Chinese law itself is is very good. Um, the you know family law, divorce law. Um, it's actually you know just strictly according to the laws. Um, the bar for divorce it's not that high. I mean, it's sort of you know Chinese divorce law. It looks a lot like. Um, no fault divorce anywhere else. Um, so, you know, no fault divorce, you don't have to prove wrongdoing. You just have to want out. You just have to go in front of a judge and say, um, I'm not happy. I'm not happy in my marriage. Um, and uh, I want to, I, I want to dissolve uh, this, this marriage. Um, it can be, it can be uh, an ex party claim, meaning unilateral, like if only one side uh, wants out. Uh, Chinese law should support that. It's the same kind of language, the same kind of legal standard that we see in no-fault divorce anywhere else, right? So irreconcilable differences or, you know, the irretrievable breakdown um, of marital relations or, or affection. That's this, the standard language in uh, the United States and U.S. Um, no-fault divorce law. That's the standard in, in uh, Chinese divorce law as well. Uh, the breakdown of mutual affection, like that's enough. Um, according to the law, but it's not enough according to um, to Chinese uh, judges, um, and it's become harder and harder and harder over time. So let me start with um, with some government um, statistics. This is not from my data set, not from my collection, but from official government um, statistics. So um, the um, which appears on that screen is a red line, and that screen is a as a, a black line that's what i'm what i'm looking at um in my i'm focusing on trials okay so these are adjudications i mean courts do more than adjudicate they do more than hold trials they also mediate cases are disposed of through withdrawals and so on but i'm focusing on the red line i'm looking pretty much only at, at divorce trials and the percentage of cases that um of trials that end in a denial in an adjudicated denial um, has gone way up uh, over over time. You can see, I mean, if you go back 20, 20 plus years ago, um, uh, most most divorce requests were granted, and it's sort of it's flipped. And now, so in recent years, the most recent um, 
years that are available, 2017 to 2021, it's over 60% of divorce trials end in a, in a denial. It's like, sorry, you're still married. You got to go home to, you know, even if you're, and these are include cases of, um, you know, uh, of, of marital violence um, and abuse. It's like, sorry, you have to stay married to your, your abuser. You can try again in, uh, in six months. Um, and just to show everybody that this trend, it, it's not limited to trials, but it, it extends to, uh, to, to all, um, all methods of disposing of cases. So if we include mediations and, and withdrawals um, as well, that's the green line. The, we see the same general trend. Of, this is what I call you know, the, the judicial clampdown uh, on divorce. It's harder and harder um, to get divorced. Now, turning to the two provinces that, uh, that I study in the book, so uh, Hunan, that's the, the orange line here or the, the black line on that screen. Um, and Zhejiang is the, is the purple line. The, the trend um, persists. It's actually, so in, in recent years in, in Hunan, um, two thirds to 70% of divorce trials end in a, in a denial. Um, so it's like, sorry, you're still married. It's um, you know similar trend in, uh, in Zhejiang. I, I'm not gonna talk about the differences between the two provinces. The differences are pretty substantial. You can see they're big differences. Um, and they're kind of counterintuitive differences, like they're not obvious, like why it would be for a long, long time. You can see in the early years, um, it was actually a lot harder to get divorced in, in Zhejiang than in, in Hunan. Um, but I, I kind of explain that in the book. I mean, the, the, the book is about the reasons for this, sort of the causes um, of the, the clampdown on divorce and the consequences. So that, you know, the human consequences, the human costs, the human toll. Um, of the uh, of of the clampdown, um, the the dotted lines here um, are my collection of court decisions. So uh, I have a, a collection of uh, 100. I analyze 144,000 um, divorce adjudications. These are the the written decisions in uh, in divorce trials, um, divided evenly between uh, Hunan and Zhejiang. So 72,000 each and you can see that they um, the patterns in, in my collection you know, mirror the um, the patterns in the the true population. So you can feel pretty confident, you know, uh, in the the um, the representativeness of my collection, um, which is about in in most years about seventy to seventy five percent of the the true population of uh, of divorce trials. Just some some characteristics um, of the the collection. Two thirds of these divorce uh, filings um, were filed by by women uh, in both samples, and that mirrors you know what we know um, from other studies and even from the Supreme People's Court itself. Supreme People's Court says it's about seventy percent of divorce um, petitions are are filed by uh, by women. Um, so, in the, looking at the most recent year, so my collections end in twenty fifteen uh, for Hunan and twenty sixteen for uh, Zhu Yang. Um, the reason um, is because courts mostly, they mostly stopped posting their uh, divorce decisions um, in October. So beginning October 1st, 2016 is when the Supreme People's Court told courts, you are no longer allowed to post divorce decisions, you know, to protect the privacy of, of minors. Um, and, uh, and, and so that's kind of when I, when I stopped um, looking at these cases. But as I'll point out, as I'll show um, very soon, um, a lot of courts continued to post actually uh, these uh, divorce decisions uh, afterwards. So there's a big difference between how judges um, decide these cases on the, the first time that they're filed versus the second time or the third time or the fourth time. It, it typically takes more than one time um, to get divorced. So the first time you file a divorce, you can see like in the most recent years, uh, you know, 75 to 80 percent um, of the time, like you're going to you're going to get denied and you have to go back. You have to wait. There's a six month waiting period. And then you're allowed to refile a new first instance trial. It's not an appeal. You're not appealing the decision. It counts as a new uh, first instance um, trial. Um, a, a lot of the time though, women, um, you know, require two, three, four, five times um, before the, the judge will grant the divorce. Sometimes the judge will never grant the divorce, no matter how many times uh, a woman um, requests, but it basically, it'll take, you know, typically, at least a year um, to get divorced in uh, in court. The um, the consequences are really bad. I mean, for for abused women, and there are a lot of abused women um, who go to court, you know, seeking help because they can't go to the civil affairs system because 
you know, only, you know, um, mutual consent um, divorces can be, you know, both sides have to show up. They both have to agree to the divorce. They both have to agree to all terms of the, to the divorce. The, the, um, the wife beater, um, you know, usually is unwilling um, to divorce or doesn't agree on the terms or is using consent as a, as a bargaining chip, withholds consent in order to get, you know, the, the house or the property or child custody or, or, or something. So women are forced to go to court. The courts say no. And then the woman has to go back to the abuser or go or hide um, and, uh, and then wait for the, for the, the, um, the statutory waiting period to, to end and then go back to, I mean, it, it takes, takes over a year usually, sometimes um, several, several years and exposes women to all kinds of risks and, uh, and dangers. It, the, um, uh, it's, it's harder for women than for men um, to, um, uh, to get divorced. You can see the denial rate is considerably higher for, for women um, than for men. And in statistical models, I'm not going to get into the details of the statistics, but you know, if you, you know, if you include as many controls as you possibly can, right, for the, the, um, the, the, the characteristics of, of the case, the gender gap here, it persists. Um, so um, it's robust to, to controls. Um, what about domestic violence allegations? I mean, as, as I mentioned, lots of women make domestic violence allegations when they show up in court. Um, a lot of them support their allegations with really compelling evidence. The, the, actually, the evidence rules are, are much laxer um, in domestic violence cases, but, but judges pretend like they're not laxer in, the, in domestic violence cases. Um, and so, you know, it's like about 40% of, uh, of women filing for divorce make uh, allegations of domestic violence. Um, and it just makes no difference. It doesn't, it does not change the outcome at all. And you can see that actually, if you just look at the, uh, at the breakdown, the outcome, right, the likelihood of a denial um, by whether a domestic violence allegation was made, it looks like making a domestic violence allegation actually increases the chances of a, of a denial. Um, now that gap uh, actually disappears when you like domestic violence allegations are sort of a proxy for other things. It's not really about domestic violence per se, um, because women are more likely to make domestic violence allegations. This actually says more about gender differences and other case characteristics. So in statistical models, that gap um, actually, it, it pretty much disappears um, when you add controls to them to the models, but it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't reverse. I mean, the point is that domestic violence allegations make no difference to the outcome. Like judges don't care. Um, they're supposed to uh, grant divorces in cases involving you know, domestic violence allegations. Um, you know, they can, even if there's no evidence to support it, judges are fully empowered by the law um, to believe women's claims, um, but they, they don't, they simply don't. Um, maybe, they, maybe they care at a personal level, but there, there are other things that just matter um, a lot more to um, uh, the judges than, uh, than protecting the legal uh, rights and interests of, of women. Um, so just to give you a sense of the, the magnitude of the, the human toll um, of uh, this clampdown, the judicial clampdown on, on divorce. I mean, I estimate just some back of the envelope math. I, I estimate that well over 100,000 women, and this is each year who are trying to divorce their abusive husbands, can't. They just have no way out um, of, their, of their divorce without paying, um, you know, they could, they could, um, you know, after the after a judge denies their divorce petition, I mean, they could uh, go to they could try to go to the civil affairs um, uh, bureau if their husband is available, if their husband is is willing. But usually, only after giving up everything, you know, giving up all property claims, giving up child custody claims. That's usually the only way that the abusive husband will will agree to the divorce. So it's it's a really terrible. Um, uh, situation. So this back of the envelope math is calculated basically according to look. They're about they're they're now over five hundred thousand divorce trials every year um, in China. We know that uh, at least two thirds of them are initiated by women. We know that uh, about forty percent of their petitions um, include allegations of of domestic violence. Um, and these allegations are often, I mean, they're they're detailed. They're harrowing. Um, they're supported by compelling evidence. None of that matters. I mean, judges just, they make their decisions just totally mechanically. It's like uniformly, it's just like, no, 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 next case. Uh, and, they, and they move on. 
And we know that about 70% of their of their petitions um, are denied. And so just simple, simple arithmetic leads to um, 93,000 um, per year who are denied. But of course, this is only divorce trials, right? We know that a lot of you know, divorce trials account for maybe 40% of, um, of divorce cases handled by courts. The others are mediated and, the, and, and are withdrawals. I mean, if we, if we add withdrawals, um, to, I mean, women are often pressured by judges to withdraw their cases, right? Drop their petitions. Um, so if we include those, um, then we, we could clearly get way more than 100,000 um, cases per year of, of um, abuse victims. They're trying to get out of their marriages and they, uh, and they, they can't. So how do judges get away with this? I mean, this is the key. That's the focus of, of my talk um, today. Um, they, you know, one, and we'll, we'll see some of these strategies, right, um, in, uh, in, the, in the trial process. Um, so, you know, no-fault divorce, remember the standard is, you know, the breakdown of mutual affection um, or irreconcilable differences, irretrievable uh, breakdown. So the plaintiff goes to, to court, tells the judge, um, mutual affection has totally broken down. It's completely broken down. You know, or um, and the and 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 the judge and the the defendant, right? The wife beater, you know, says says, you know, uh polia or mayo or you know, mayo da polia or something like that. Like it hasn't broken down. You know, I don't think mutual affection is broken down. And then the judge, the judge will say, well, your husband doesn't want to get divorced. That means he still loves you. So you cl clearly mutual affection has not broken down. So that's one very, very, that's a typical strategy. Um, in cases involving domestic violence or other forms of wrongdoing, um, the husband will, will often, you know, the wife beater will often uh, confess, right? Will admit, will, will say, um, I did beat her and I'm very, very sorry. Um, I, I admit it, well, we're in Swala. you know, he, he'll, he'll admit wrongdoing. And say, but you know, I want another chance. You know, I want to turn over a new leaf. I'm. I will correct my errors. I will. I will prove that I can be a good, a good husband. And then the judge will say, "See, he wants another chance." So, so, so mutual affection has not broken down, and you, you cannot divorce. Um, judges will often ignore the law. They'll redefine domestic violence. Um, they'll say, "Oh, well, yeah, he beat you. Yeah, he beat you." But you know, but that, but beating is not the same as domestic violence. That's not the legal definition of domestic violence. So, so this is a very typical uh, strategy um, for they'll let me kind of make up a definition, or they'll say that, well, he 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 only beat you once. Yeah, it's yeah, he broke your arm, and um, you know, and you went to the hospital, um, or he stabbed you with a knife, but it was only once. And the legal definition of domestic violence it has to be recurring and and uh, persistent and frequent. Um, so that's not domestic violence. Um, or they'll or they'll say it's not it's not domestic violence it's just it's fighting it's that yeah and and um, they'll say this is normal every come on every marriage there's fighting so what do you talk you know so this is a way that judges kind of gaslight domestic violence victims by by normalizing it you know they'll, they'll say they'll say what do you what makes you so special you know this happens in every marriage um, so you know just be realistic um, and uh, have have kind of you know, set, they, they kind of, you know, try to reset expectations and gaslight um, domestic violence victims into, into um, you know, uh, to question their own sense of reality. I mean, women, the victims come in and, they, and they, they know, they know that their rights were violated. They know they have the legal right to divorce. They know that, that, that what their husband did was against the law, maybe even a criminal uh, offense, oftentimes, yeah, a criminal uh, offense. And the judges, they gaslight them and then make them question their own reality, and um, and that often leads to the pressure to withdraw their their petitions, and um, and that that's the the fifth strategy: persuading, you know, pressuring, pressuring plaintiffs to withdraw their petitions. So all of these strategies are, are in the in the book. You know, I talk about uh, all, all of them. Um, what I've been doing more recently um, in preparation for the talk today um is is i've been i've been watching um video recordings of, of trials and um i didn't do that for the book because courts only started video recording their trials after my collection ended. like i i analyzed cases through 2015 and 2016 only in 2017 really did courts start recording their trials so i couldn't like compare the tr the um the written court decisions in my collection with the trials um that are video recorded but i i, I started um Doing this comparison uh, recently, 
And, and one thing you can see, if you start watching these trials and then you, you compare the contents of the trials, like what happens in the trials, what women say and what the judges say to the contents of the written court decisions, they're so different, so different. I mean, the situation is actually even worse. Like my book is already super depressing um, and just an aggravating and infuriating, uh, in, in fact. And my, uh, and, you know, my, my kids, um, you know, ask me, you know, what, why are you, why, why did you devote so many years of your life to this this research such a depressing uh, uh topic and it's uh and it's true but actually the situation is even worse um when you start watching these um these trials and you see what the judges are are removing like they're not including in their uh in their written court decisions um and we'll we'll look at uh at, at some of that um and uh I should get my uh, I want to make sure that I if I have to skip over stuff so we can watch these uh, these videos, I, I I will. You know what? I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna just skip over all this stuff because I'm already kind of running out of time. You already I, I think I've already made clear kind of what this the legal standard is like domestic violence. It is it does constitute grounds for divorce. Like and and even if um, women who make allegations right claims of domestic violence, they don't have. The kind of evidence that judges would normally demand in other kinds of civil cases, judges are fully empowered to relax those standards. And, and I talk about all of that in the book. The Supreme People's Court has been very, very clear about you know shifting the burden of proof to to defendants and uh, and using a um, what's you know what's called a preponderance of the evidence um, standard, which is very different from the ordinary standard of evidence um, in, uh, in in civil cases. I'm just going to sort of skip over this. Um, so I think you get the, uh, uh, the, the the idea. I'll skip over uh, this um, as, as as well. In fact, <laughs> I'll skip over an entire section that I was going. So one of the things that I'll just tell you very briefly, um, you know, this is probably the tenth book talk I've, I've I've given. But you know, every every book talk I give is different. And for this one, I did a lot of new research. Um, I I was able to um, to collect more than 100,000 new uh, written court decisions um, after 2016. Uh, so beginning in, uh, so, so from 2017 to 2022, I was able to find on um, chinalawinfo.com, that's Beida Fabao, on the Beida Fabao one, um, I was able to bulk download. It was kind of amazing. I had no idea this was possible. It's actually possible. You can do it. I mean, it's tedious. It takes a lot of time, but it is possible to do it. And I was able to, one of the questions that I always get in, in book talks like this is, um, first of all, can you, you know, you just studied two provinces. W what about the other, you know, 28 provinces in, uh, in, in China? So with these newer cases, uh, you know, over 100,000 uh, newer cases from all provinces across China, the patterns are identical. They're exactly the same. Um, and from 20, and the other question people ask is, well, wait a minute, the, uh, the 2015 anti-domestic violence law, that was, that took effect, um, uh, in I think March of 2016, and so surely things are better then. Like you didn't have much time to assess the impact of the anti-domestic violence law, and then other official efforts from the top to to improve the situation um, and to protect women um, who have been beaten by their their husbands. Um, I did have you know six months in my Zhejiang collection to to look at. You know this was after the anti-domestic violence law took effect. Um, and I had, you know, um, over 10,000 court decisions in that six month period from Judge Young and, and the anti-domestic violence law was like, it made no difference. I mean, it wasn't, judges didn't even cite it. They never mentioned it. Uh, they mentioned it in one case, one case out of 10,500 um, uh, court decisions. And so, but the question is, well, you need a little more time. I mean, it's been now, it's been, you know, six, seven years. Um, so, um, and, and I can tell you that, that uh, that in the six, seven years, you know, in, in over 100,000 uh, written court decisions that, that, that I have, the anti-domestic violence law is, is cited uh, in the court decisions by judges, um, you know, like 10 times, um, something like that out of over 100,000 cases. So, you know, judges are, they're not using it. They're not citing it. They're not following it. Um, they're just completely uh, ignoring it. And the decision-making patterns have not changed um, at, at all. Not one iota, they're exactly the same. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of I go through the characteristics of the all the new cases that I downloaded and and stuff just to but you can just trust me that <laughs> that they're that they're the they're the same. That this only points out that this graph just shows that the peak of when written divorce decisions were available 2014 and 2015.
those are the peak years. Um, and it was because, like I said, beginning in 2016, the Supreme People's Court told courts, you, you may no longer publicly disclose divorce decisions. But still, remark, I mean, the, the line here, it, it doesn't go down to zero. So courts are still posting about 5% of their divorce decisions. Um, and over the six year period from 2017 to 2022, that, that amounts to over 100,000. And I did some rough benchmarking and they're actually like, they're, they're, they seem like representative. They seem like we can learn a lot from these. Uh, there, there's one outlier, Shan, she is, is kind of an outlier. So let's see what these trials look like. Um, and we'll see some of these strategies um, that, uh, you know, how judges deal with, um, with domestic violence allegations. Like what, what I was able to do, like when, when you have a collection of over 100,000 written divorce decisions, you can, you can look for cases that seem potentially interesting. You can, you can search, you can do a very kind of focused or very targeted search, right, for certain kinds of cases. Then you take the case ID and then you plug it into the, um, uh, into the website where courts are supposed to post their the video recordings. This is the Zhongguo um, Tingshan, uh, Gong Kai Wang. And, 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 uh, and you look for matches and then you watch, you, you know, you read the court, the written decision, and then you watch the trial and then you, and you compare, you look for, for, you know, for differences and it's remarkable. Um, so let's take a, let's take a look. Let, let me point out that in this in this trial, the defendant, so the, the husband, he didn't turn his microphone on. Um, so it's it's almost impossible to, to hear what he's saying. His voice is getting picked up by the plaintiff's, you know, his wife's microphone, which is kind of across the courtroom. Um, but the judge is, this is, and, and this is really interesting. You can also see the style of judging, this sort of um 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 what's the what's the the opposite of um um adversarial inquisitorial judging style right where it's the judge who's like leading the show the judge is the one who's like questioning the um the litigants and it's the judge who is actually then um rewarding what the litigants are saying for the court clerk so the court clerk is typing everything but only typing actually not what the litigants are saying, but, but the judges rephrasing of what the litigants uh, say. So it's super interesting. This uh, I'll also mention, I mean, it's just super interesting to look at the layouts of the courts. There's huge variation in the, just the layout, the interior design of the courts. And, and you can see that this, this process of like, including, I mean, Ben's written a lot published on, on the use of AI in courts and there's the, 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 um, just the huge investment of technology uh, in courts in every courtroom, every courtroom in China, every basic level court, you know, over 3,000 basic level courts in China, they've got these big server racks um, in the corner, you can see them in every court. Um, the technology does, like this one, you can actually see, there's like the little window here where you can see the court clerk um, typing. Not every uh, courtroom does that, but a lot of them do. Mm. Uh. Well,用皮带打他。是因为打他。是因为。半夜三四点。是因为半夜三四点原告还与。半夜三四点原告还与别的男的。在外面。喝酒。所以我才打的。你用的刀背子意思就是吓唬了一下
。再一个，原被告你们懂不懂得什么叫家庭暴力？懂，他用刀正，不是刀背。嗯。他用刀刃，因为他用开水泼我，我把开水过烫，想然后他拿刀子这样刨，现在基本上他也硬了，硬子在我身上了。行，等会我们下一步会问，好吧？原告，你现在离婚的主要理由是什么？主要理由就是家庭暴力。家庭暴力、啊。没有责任心，嗯、因为他就是那种，你说就都用刀砍我，用开水要锅要、嗯、开水要泼烫我，嗯、我能。嗯再不用哪天还有刀砍我，没有责任心。我外出喝酒没有这种事，他在这儿直接就是我问你，你现在离婚的主要理由是什么？你现在就 in this sort of thing, you know, the judge is like interrupting. Um, it's utterly typical and it's super gendered. Um, as as well, you can see actually. I mean, this whole trial is about this is I just stitched together small pieces, right? I these are excerpts. Um, it was a ninety minute trial. Um, the video recording. And this is just like small pieces、uh, of it, but you can find other parts where the judge just like shuts down the the plaintiff,、uh, you know, sort of scolds、um, and and berates the、uh, the plaintiff,、um, you know, and tells her, you know, tells her to, you know, control her emotions and、uh, and things like things like that. 是被告对你实施家庭暴力，没有责任心，是吧？嗯。原告，你认为你们夫妻感情不和有没有达到破裂的程度啊？具体表现在哪些方面？嗯，他们他们家族都在那个啥，欺负我，想把我拉到那个大马路上。Right, I'm going to move to the next.、Um... 嗯。然后呢，就是他用刀砍我，就是开水烫我，这就是。这种行为已经很直接，已经很过了。考虑到娃娃，我没有报警。要是不考虑娃娃，我就报警了，因为他把这肩膀开的特别疼，当年。而且，被告对我实施家庭暴力，法律上的家庭暴力是指的持续性的，听懂了吗？也就是隔三差五的对你实施殴打的行为。That's not true, by the way. The judge is lying. There's no, there's no, there's no legal provision anywhere that that says that the legal definition of domestic violence, you know, is persistent or frequent or recurrent.、Um, there's he's he's misusing a separate provision、uh, actually on when when it it, it、um, when beating you know, when violence constitutes a criminal offense. That's what he's talking about. But judges typically. Misuse that provision to redefine、um, domestic violence, so that they they don't have to affirm the occurrence of domestic violence and grant the divorce. 这种家庭暴力的行为一般是通过公安机关的呃笔录或者是当地妇联的出具的材料来认定的。当时我没有考虑娃娃，没有报警。我还打算报警的，考虑到娃娃我没有报警。而且被告对我实施家庭暴力。You know, another reason why I mean, she may not have wanted to say this, but it's a very common reason, and lots and lots of research has shown this in in China that women don't report incidents to the, they don't call the police when they're getting beaten because they're afraid that their husband's going to kill them. The husband will directly threaten them. If you call the police, I will kill you. And so it's it's actually unusual for for women to、uh, to call the police. And this is one of the reasons why the Supreme People's Court actually has issued guidance to judges in domestic violence cases that that women don't need evidence.、Um, they just the judge just can they the judge is empowered to just take their claims seriously and to believe them. And she has other of it. I mean, we'll, we'll see this. Ah, good. Ah, 我肩膀上的伤印，还有我他用磁带打了我，还我拍了个照片，手机上。现在有没有证据？手机上有吗？要不提交不提交？我可以让你看，但是我没有打印出来。手机上有个有一张。有一张是，我刚才就跟你说了，家庭暴力，从法律上的家庭暴力指的是持续性的。你这一张照片能看出来持续性的吗？持续性。两口子之间打架那是。Uh, so we've seen several of the strategies, right?、Um, you know, one is redefining 
redefining um, domestic violence uh, and um, uh, normalizing it and trivializing it, right? Saying, oh, this happens in every, uh, every marriage. And calling it fighting, just fighting and arguing, you know, yeah, in, instead of domestic violence. And she's having none of it. She's like, she's she's exercising real agency here, right? She's she's like, she knows what her rights are. She knows what the law says. And, and she's like, wait a minute, this is not fighting. He cut me with a knife, with a cleaver, you know, it's high dao. It's it's just like, I mean, it's it, 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 I'm like speed, and uh, this was this was not hard to find this video. Uh, I've I've watched dozens of videos that are almost exactly the same. I mean, this happens every day in almost every court in in China. This is not unusual. Um, okay, I mean, this happens everywhere uh, all the time. So she, the the Supreme People's Court has also been very clear that that the victims of domestic violence can use their wounds, right, their scars on their body as evidence in court. The judge could have just asked her to show the, the wound. That's evidence. Or to, to bring, I've also seen in trials where, where the plaintiffs will take, take their cell phone and just bring it up to the bench. The judge will say, you know, will the plaintiff come forward to the bench and, you know, approach the, the bench with your cell phone. Show me the, you don't need to have it printed up. Um, you didn't need any any of this, um, but in the end, she doesn't submit any evidence. He bullied her into not submitting any evidence. And in the written court decision, he writes, um, "the the divorce I didn't, you know, the court hereby denies the plaintiff's petition owing to uh, a lack of evidence, insufficient evidence." <laughs> That's not true either. That's absolutely not true. I mean, the the um the law is very clear on this. If judges um encounter compelling evidence of domestic violence, they're actually required to refer the case to the procuracy. The police are supposed to investigate uh, this matter, and but judges, they just kind of like wash their hands. They they say, "This isn't our problem. This is a civil case. This is this is family court. I'm hearing your divorce trial. Um, you know, criminal stuff that belongs to the police. That's not our problem. That's very very typical, even though it's not true." Oh, 我在法庭上处理案子的时候，也是这两天，两家两家子人都回来了呢。心都没看到两家子先打下了四个，两家子打下了四个，那我的婚姻离婚案子我肯定先不处理了，你先把四个人先去，先拘留掉，先看病，该
decision. It's a it's a tiding It was through um, a, a, a case withdrawal. So she dropped her case under the pressure of the judge. And you can watch what happened. This is a I, this was the first trial. The same litigants, the same the same wife, the same husband, different judge. And you you know you watch the trial, and she's she's saying making the same allegations, the same she's telling the same stories, and getting the same kind of treatment. And then and then at the very end of the trial, the judge the judge says he just stops and he says Jayangba. He says, "How about this? Let's do it this way." And then he turns off his microphone, and you can't hear anything. The audio is gone, and he's like blah, 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 talking talking. And then he, after a, a couple of minutes, he turns on the microphone again uh, and 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 says. Um, the court hereby approves the plaintiff's request to withdraw her case. Um, <clears throat> so he he pressured her into doing that. This is the outcome. So basically, you know, it's anyway. Uh, take my word for it. That was the outcome of of the case. So in in the in the first trial that we watched, there were no lawyers, right? And so one question you might ask: Well, maybe it makes a difference if there if there's a lawyer present who can really advocate for the plaintiff. There are a lot of trials where where lawyers are present. Um, so let, let's, and the lawyers were some really good, actually. This is where I would have loved to watch trials when I wrote my book, is I had no idea what the lawyers were doing, because it's not in the court decisions themselves. You have no idea if it's the plaintiff or the defendant who's talking, or if it's their lawyers who are, who are talking. Um, and it's just super fascinating. This is a very brief, a relatively brief clip, and, you, and, and just check it out. Yo. So the judge just asked... Oh, the, the, the judge asked the, uh, the plaintiff, do you, do you have any evidence to submit? So this is the part of the trial where they um, submit and discuss and, uh, evidence. This is the lawyer talking. Chemi 被告的家人无法直至被告的行为到达县城的时间是二十三时四十分证明被告确实有家庭暴力的行为。Owing to time, I'm, I'm just, um, I'll, I'll just point out a couple of points and then wrap up and then we'll turn to, to Q&A. But the, the main point um, is, is that there was a lot of evidence in there, a boatload of evidence, like good evidence. Um, that was submitted to the court. The court affirmed the the evidence. The defendant was given an opportunity, right, to to challenge um, the evidence and and didn't. Um, and if you in the court, the written court decision, none of that evidence is, is included. None of it. If you only read the court decision, you would think there was no evidence. The plaintiff didn't submit any evidence. Um, so the, the the judge totally concealed all that uh, all that evidence. The same thing happened in the first trial. Um, none of those, there was a lot of discussion, you know, lots of detailed, um, statements from the plaintiff, you know, about the, you know, the scalding water, the burns, the, um, uh, the stab, you know, the cutting from the, the cleaver and none of that was in the court decision. You would have no, if you read the court decision, you would have no idea that the plaintiff made those statements. And one of the puzzles to me, this may be a question for you guys, is 
where did all that information go? The clerk was typing all that stuff in, right? So does that mean that there, the court actually kept keeps separate records, like more detailed transcripts of the court proceedings that don't end up, Ben's nodding, <laughs> and he's like, like a lot of that stuff doesn't end up in the, in the final court decision. Do the, do the litigants have access to those? Do they get copies of the full transcript? Of the, sorry? I don't get a copy, but they probably can technically do it. Yeah. Um, so it's part of the appeal that they're not. Um, what do they do with them? Uh, and but the thing is, is that they, you know, divorce decisions are basically never appealed. They're not appealed. Um, they don't, and there, there are reasons for that. And I, I talk about that in the in the book why they're why they're not appealed. Um, you know, they. I, I was going to show you this this trial, but I but I want this one is super interesting. Just look at the layout of the. This is a family court. It's a family court, and look at all the symbolism in this family court. The purpose of this family court is not to not, not to. Um, uh, to grant divorces, it's to reconcile uh, couples. You know, look at the round table. They're they're all sitting together at this table. Then this computer, even the judges at the same table, and the symbolism of, of the you know the round circle. It's all you know, family unity and harmony. You can see this thing on the wall here, the circle and square, the funny men, and the you know jia hu, king hu, hood, yeah, hu and I mean, it's 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 not very subtle, right? Like what the and this and this poem as well on the the super cheesy uh, cliche, the um, you know poem about like oh every every family has um it's like you know um you know ku ku pung pung it's ice one I mean I mean all these cliches you know oh some conflict is 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 unavoidable and, and inevitable and you know you need to cherish your family and that's what judges do in these in these all these um. Every trial that I showed, and pretty much every adjudicated denial, you read that they they have these like really hackneyed, cliched in the, written in the decisions themselves. Um, you know, if you just if you just improve your communication skills, if you try harder, uh, overcome your differences, you know, you, then you can uh, you can reconcile. Um, you know, you have reconciliation potential, and and there, you know, and this is why um, you know uh, uh, mutual affection has not broken down and you do not meet the standard for uh for divorce in this particular trial which i i don't have time uh to show the lawyer was amazing and like cross-examined the, the defendant and 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 uh the defendant got the defendant to admit right there in the trial it's like yeah i beat her i didn't beat her just once i beat her all the time but i promise i'll never do it again he wrote what's called a pledge letter about Zhong Shu. you know he promised that he would never do it again he had begged for a second chance and the judge the judge said uh, and it's this is actually in the decision. Um, the the judge said that the the defendant admits his mistakes um, and wants another chance and promises to be a good husband and a good father. And you guys need to try again and keep trying harder. Um, and uh, and and mutual affection has not has not broken down. And um, and your divorce petition is hereby denied. And that's so utterly typical. Just happens. Um, uh, all the time, um, every day. So I'll, I'll end here and um, and take your look forward to your comments and uh, ideas and, uh, and and questions. Yeah, um, in the uh, you already covered my uh, my first question. Um, the second one is that. Uh, the gender distribution of judges. 